If I were to tell you that there was a Brazilian football club, owned and operated by an eccentric billionaire and religious leader accused of founding a dangerous cult, that once travelled to North Korea, claiming to be the Brazilian national team, you would probably say, why hasn't HITC7's made a video about it yet? That sounds like literally the exact type of thing that he would make a video about. Well, that would be a reasonable question, so today I am writing those wrongs with the tale of Sun Myung Moon, Clube Atletico Sorocaba, and an unlikely footballing pilgrimage to the world's most famous hermit kingdom. In 1954, Moon founded the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. Which, you know, is a bit of a mouthful, hence why the religious movement would come to be better known as the Unification Church. Moon claimed to be the Messiah, literally, the second coming of Jesus Christ, who he said he had met at the age of 15. This might all sound a little bit far-fetched, and like quite a lot to take in so early on in the video if you are unfamiliar with either Moon or the Unification Church, so I will rewind a little to before Moon alleges that he met Jesus Christ. Moon was born in Chongju, in what is now North Korea, but was at the time a unified Korea, albeit unified under Japanese occupation. A year before Moon was born, the March 1st movement, which was a widespread protest movement carried out by roughly 2 million Korean students and civilians, was brutally suppressed by the Japanese. After annexing Korea in 1910, the Empire of Japan renamed the peninsula Chosen and waged a merciless war on Korean culture. The Korean language was banned in both schools and universities, the Japanese destroyed over 200,000 historical Korean documents, and it became a crime to teach history from non-approved texts. This was the Korea in which Moon was raised, initially as a Confucianist, until his family converted to Christianity and joined the Presbyterian Church when he was 10 years old. During World War II, Moon began studying electrical engineering at university, he married his first wife, had his first child, cooperated with Communist Party members in the Korean independence movement against the Japanese, and, perhaps most crucially of all, he started attending a church led by a man named Bak Moon Kim, who claimed that he had been personally instructed by Jesus to spread the message of a new Israel throughout the entire world. Following World War II, Korea was divided along the 38th parallel into two trusteeships of the United States and the Soviet Union. In 1947, Moon was convicted by the provisional North Korean government under Soviet administration, before the DPRK had been formally established, of spying on behalf of South Korea, and he was handed a five-year sentence in Hungnam labor camp. Three years later, during the Korean War, US-led UN troops raided the camp, and Moon fled to Busan in North Korea. Just like his chance meeting with Bak Moon Kim did in a religious context, Moon's years spent in a labour camp would shape his entire worldview from a political perspective, turning him into a fierce anti-communist, and he would soon merge the religious and the political to devastating effect. Moon turned his worldview into a self-styled religion, claiming, just as Bak Moon Kim had, to have spoken to Jesus and to have been acting on his words, and that he himself was a messiah. That is not the only claim that Moon is accused of plagiarising, with many of the ideas adopted by the Unification Church having been present in Bak Moon Kim's book, entitled The Fundamental Principles of Christianity. Moon's ideas proved to be incredibly popular in a country which had, in the space of less than 50 years, gone from having its own empire to being occupied by the Japanese, was then split in half at the end of World War II, and then experienced the brutal Korean War from 1950 to 1953, in which an estimated 3 million people were killed, or roughly 10% of the peninsula's total population, in a senseless waste of life that resulted in North and South Korea being divided down almost identical lines as before the conflict began. Within just 18 months of Moon founding the church, there were 30 centres throughout South Korea, and before the end of the 1950s, the church had started sending missionaries to both Japan and the United States. Expansion into Europe began in the 1960s, covertly in communist countries like Czechoslovakia, and in the 1970s, the Unification Church gathered rapid interest and support in South America. 
the church attracted controversy, especially after it expanded outside of Korea, and reached the peak of its popularity during the 1980s for its methods of recruitment and indoctrination. Unification church missionaries were, and indeed still are, accused of targeting unattached young people, often lacking in support networks, and of using deceptive methods to recruit them. Typically, it has been widely reported, the potential recruits would be approached by missionaries from the opposite sex, asked to go out for dinner, and then be invited to go on a retreat. They would then be love-bombed, with the church portraying themselves as a family looking to welcome them in. The ritual of Moonies, as they are most commonly referred to in the press, that receive the most media attention though, has always been the church's mass marriages, in which sometimes more than 3,000 couples have been married in collective ceremonies, with as many as 15,000 people in attendance in total. The marriages are arranged, some by Moon personally prior to his death, and the couples are frequently from entirely different parts of the globe and have sometimes only known each other for as little as a few weeks. The rise in popularity, interest, and number of members of the church also resulted in a massive rise in revenue. Not dissimilar to the Church of Scientology, in some respects, the Unification Church is a commercial enterprise as well as a religious one, owning several businesses, properties, and a truly enormous amount of land. During the 1980s, it was reported by the Washington Post that most of Moon and the church's revenue was generated by members in Japan, who were instructed to make donations almost as reparations for Imperial Japan's actions in Korea, to sell marble vases, miniature treasure pagodas, and other religious icons whilst claiming that they had supernatural powers. If that was the primary source of the church's revenue, they must have sold a heck of a lot of vases, as Moon's Unification Church transferred the best part of a billion dollars into the United States between 1975 and 1984 alone, which is equivalent to more than $3 billion now. It is also the case that members worldwide would themselves help fund the church's expansion and various business interests. Former members describe having no possessions and virtually no income as any money they earned would be earmarked for God's work. God's work, apparently, included building an enormous business and media empire. At the time of his death in 2012, Moon was reported to be worth 900 million US dollars, and his surviving second wife has since been described as being a dollar billionaire. The Unification Church's business operations are run principally via two holding companies, namely the Tongil Group and News World Communications. The Tongil Group subsidiaries include the Ilwa Company, which is a healthcare corporation that manufactures ginseng and various pharmaceuticals, Ilsin Stone, which produces building materials, and Tongil Heavy Industries, who manufacture machine parts, including hardware that they then sell to the South Korean military, which is the sixth best equipped military on the planet, ahead of both France and the United Kingdom. News World Communications, meanwhile, is primarily a media corporation, as its name suggests, with publications founded by Moon, including Sege Ilbo in South Korea and the Washington Times in the United States. Both are explicitly right-wing and conservative publications, and former US President Ronald Reagan was supposedly a daily reader of the Washington Times. The paper has backed every Republican presidential candidate since its inception, from Reagan to Trump, and has attracted no lack of controversy for publishing pseudo-scientific climate denialism, second-hand smoke denialism, and virulent racism, which has included platforming well-known neo-Nazis and propagating white nationalist ideas, which might seem a bit unusual for a newspaper founded by a Korean who claimed that his 1982 conviction for willfully filing false federal income tax returns was because of the colour of his skin, and urged his American members to elect an African-American president in 1974. The Unification Church, it should be said, was always explicitly political. Moon viewed the Cold War as a religious conflict between good and evil. Not just figuratively, like a lot of American conservatives, but literally, Moon believed that it was a battle between God, who was represented by liberal democracies, 
and Satan, who took the form on Earth of communism, and Moon felt that Korea was the front line of this decisive religious conflict. Moon, therefore, sought the downfall of global communism and the reunification of Korea as a single, liberal capitalist state. And when the Soviet Union collapsed at the beginning of the 1990s, and a number of communist states fell along with it, Moon claimed personal credit. If that sounds a little bit delusional and narcissistic, I will remind you that we are talking about a self-appointed messiah who claimed to have met Jesus when he was 15 after coincidentally meeting someone who also happened to have met Jesus and had a similar conversation with the old JC, and who founded his own church in which members considered him and his second wife to be their, quote, true parents. Whether you choose to believe that Moon was certifiably insane, that he was just an extremely effective huckster and fraud, or that he really was all of the things that he claimed, and I wouldn't wish to persuade you in any direction, he was obviously very good at what he did, and at its peak, the Unification Church had over 3 million members, making Moon more money than most people, and certainly most Moonies, would ever have even been able to visualise. It also turned him into a pretty notable public figure, who apparently wasn't too wacky or too out there, to put the likes of Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, George Bush, George W. Bush, Mikhail Gorbachev, and Kim Il-sung off associating with him. It also afforded him significant cultural capital, including within the world of sport. Pelé, then, and still by many people regarded as being the greatest footballer of all time, described Moon as being his spiritual father. In addition to pharmaceuticals, newspapers, and military equipment, the Unification Church also entered the business of football, not so much to make money, in that case, a little bit like their media corporation, but to aid recruitment, gain greater prominence, and to spread the church's message. Football has always been used as a propaganda tool, and in 1989, having sought to start his own football team ever since the creation of the K-League in 1983, Moon founded Ilwa Chunma FC, based in the South Korean capital of Seoul. The club was an enormous success, not just from a strategic perspective for the church, but also in terms of their results on the pitch. K-League champions seven times between 1993 and 2006, it wasn't until 2020 that Jeonbuk Hyundai Motors finally overtook Moon's former club as the most successful in the history of the K-League. The Unification Church sold Ilwa Chunma in 2014, two years after Moon's death, to the Songnam City government, who renamed the club Songnam FC. As the church expanded into South America then, and particularly Brazil, a country which is synonymous with the beautiful game more so than perhaps any other, and where football is almost a religion in of itself, the obvious step for Moon was to buy his own football club. In the end, he bought two, Clube Atletico Sorocaba, better known as Atletico Sorocaba, and Clube Esportivo Nobe Esperanza, who are more commonly referred to by their initial C-E-N-E. C-E-N-E won their state championship, the Campeonato Sulmato Grossense, six times between 2002 and 2014, but it is Atletico Sorocaba that we are primarily interested in. Based in Sorocaba, as their name suggests, which is the eighth largest city in the state of Sao Paulo, the club reached the top tier of Sao Paulo's state championship on Moon's Watch, and the third tier of Brazilian football nationwide, which is known as the Campeonato Brasileiro Serie C. In 2005, they were relegated back down to the second tier of Sao Paulo State Championship, where they typically entertained crowds of about two to 3,000 spectators. In 2009, however, Sorocaba would play in front of a crowd of 80,000 people, with an additional 20 to 30,000 people waiting outside of the ground. This match wasn't in Sao Paulo, though. It wasn't even in Brazil. This match took place in the North Korean capital of Pyongyang at the Kim Il-sung Stadium against the North Korean national team. Despite being a committed anti-communist, Moon did more business with North Korea and had closer ties to the Kim regime than almost any other South Korean or American. He was personally close with Kim Il-sung, North Korea's founder, who is still the DPRK's president, holding the title of Eternal President now, despite his death 
1994, when he was replaced upon his death by his son, Kim Jong-il, Jong-il instead took the title of Supreme Leader, which has been held by his son, Kim Jong-un, since his own death. Even after Kim Il-sung's death, Moo maintained a business relationship with his son, Kim Jong-il, expanding the Unification Church's business empire to the Hermit Kingdom. In 1998, the church launched a joint venture with the North Korean government, founding Pyonghua Motors, which is the largest, and indeed, is one of only two car manufacturers in all of North Korea. The Unification Church built the company's plants, which was the largest plant manufacturing automobiles in North Korea, at a cost of more than $55 million. In exchange, they would own 70% of Pyonghua Motors, with the other 30% held by the North Korean government, an arrangement which remained unchanged from the company's founding in 1998, all the way up until 2013, when it became wholly state-owned. Owning 70% of the company that owned exclusive rights to car production, purchase, and the sale of used cars in a country of 25 million people might sound like quite a big deal, but in reality, few North Koreans have either the need nor the resources to buy their own car. And as such, Pyonghua Motors never made or sold all that many cars. In 2003, for example, the company manufactured just 314 cars, despite building a plant capable of producing 10,000 cars a year. Automobiles weren't Moon's only business interests in North Korea, though. The Unification Church also built the Potengang Hotel in Pyongyang, which remains the most luxurious and expensive hotel in North Korea, as well as opening a sushi restaurant on the premises and employing Kim Jong-il's former personal chef. How much money these various enterprises actually made is unclear, though. It seems unlikely that it was very much and probable that they made a loss, but it was all part of the church's expansion into North Korea and Moon's efforts to reunify the peninsula. To that end, when North Korea qualified automatically for the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, their first FIFA World Cup finals appearance since shocking the world by beating Italy in England in 1966, Moon felt that he could make Kim Jong-il and North Korean officials a very attractive offer. Though North Korea had enjoyed a successful World Cup qualification campaign, they had next to no experience playing against teams from outside of Asia and the different styles and tactics that those sides might adopt. What's more, they had every reason to be fearful heading to South Africa, having been drawn in the so-called group of death up against Portugal, Brazil, and the Ivory Coast. Due to various sanctions, diplomatic disputes, and the reluctance to travel to North Korea, few established national teams from outside of Asia were willing to face them in warm-up fixtures. They did manage to play a game against a Denmark League 11, which was an unofficial Denmark representative team in Thailand, and a few African national teams in friendlies, and in the international friendship tournament based in Qatar. But the chance to play Brazilian opposition ahead of facing Brazil at the World Cup, well, that was just too good to turn down. The Atletico Sorocaba players had grave reservations about traveling to North Korea, especially when they saw the Air Koyo plane that would be flying them from Beijing to Pyongyang, which Atletico Masseus Sidney Gramatico described as being patched together with epoxy resin. The club's manager, Edu Marangon, said that the heavily armed presence that greeted the team at the airport, quote, gave you the feeling of being in a concentration camp. On the day of the game, as the Atletico Sorocaba players were greeted by enormous crowds, about 30 times larger than anything that they had been used to in Brazil, they were a bit taken aback. It was only when the game started and they saw the scoreboard, which read PRK nil, BRA nil, that they started to put two and two together. As far as the crowd was concerned, this team that was, rather conveniently, playing in their yellow away kit was the Brazilian national team. Not a team from the second tier of Sao Paulo State Championship. The 0-0 draw then, in which Atletico were actually the better team, was heralded as an impressive result for the home side. When in actual fact, a team in a regional second division drawing with a national team that had just qualified for the World Cup ought to be heralded as a tremendous triumph by Atletico albeit the DPRK side were without their three overseas star players. 
The Brazil manager at the time, Dunga, got in touch with Atletico's manager, asking him for his honest assessment of the North Korean national team ahead of the World Cup. Morangon told him that he had nothing to fear, but in both countries' opening games at the tournament in South Africa, North Korea put on a valiant display, holding firm against a Brazil team which contained the likes of Kaká and Robinho for 55 minutes before a Maicon wonder goal, or a total fluke depending upon your perspective, broke the deadlock and Brazil went on to win 2-1. North Korea's next game against Portugal wouldn't be quite as tight a contest as the DPRK lost 7-0 and finally 3-0 in their last game against the Ivory Coast. It was widely reported at the time that North Korea had refused to screen their opening game in North Korea against Brazil through fear of humiliation, but after their valiant 2-1 defeat, they had subsequently shown their 7-0 loss to Portugal before claiming that they had won the tournament by presenting the public with doctored footage. There is absolutely no reason to believe that any of that is the case, and I have made an entire video about the realities of football in North Korea, Western coverage of the country, and how football is actually used as a tool of state propaganda in the DPRK, should any of you be interested. Sun Myung Moon died in 2012 at the age of 92, but the Unification Church is still an enormously powerful commercial and religious enterprise, still funded largely by their members in Japan, who are told that their donations act as repentance for the ills committed by Imperial Japan in Korea from 1910 through to 1945. The church no longer owns any football clubs, having sold their South Korean team in 2014, and with Atletico Sorocaba having been dissolved in 2016, and CENE in 2018. In 2003, the church founded the Peace Cup, which was an international pre-season tournament which ran until Moon's death in 2012, with winners including Tottenham Hotspur, who beat Lyon in the final in 2005, and Aston Villa, who overcame the might of Juventus in 2009. The church's business cooperation with North Korea has been made increasingly difficult due to further sanctions and the self-imposed isolation by North Korea, particularly in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Unification Church's South American empire, if you like, which included 500,000 hectares of farmland in Brazil and more than 600,000 in neighbouring Paraguay, engulfed a combined landmass larger than countries such as Norway, Belgium and Sri Lanka. In 2002, Moon was investigated for alleged money laundering, tax evasion, and abetting illegal immigration into Brazil, and the church's real estate and other assets in Brazil, estimated to be worth a grand total of $250 million, were seized by the state. Moon's wife, Hak Han, with whom he fathered 14 children, 10 of whom are still living, and had a 23-year age gap with, now leads the Unification Church. One of Moon and Han's sons, Hyunjin Moon, is the founder and chairman of the Global Peace Foundation and Family Peace Association, which claim to promote an innovative, values-based approach to peace building, guided by the vision of one family under God. Another of their sons, Moon Kuk Jin, is the founder and owner of Car Arms, an American firearm manufacturer. If you think that seems a bit ironic or like a bit of a contradiction, just wait until you hear about the blessing ceremonies that the World Peace and Unification Sanctuary Church holds for AR-15 rifles. Nope, I am not joking. Hyung Jin Moon, who co-founded the World Peace and Unification Sanctuary Church that holds those ceremonies alongside his wife, is perhaps Moon and Han's most eccentric offspring. And believe me, there is plenty of competition. The splinter movement that he founded is considered by some people to be the military sect of the Unification Church, but is considered by the church itself to be a breakaway movement, after Han removed Hyung Jin from all of his official roles within the church due to his more extremist views. Hyung Jin travelled to North Korea in 2011 to attend the funeral of Kim Jong-il and has been fiercely critical of his own mother, describing her as being the whore of Babylon rather than the true mother, which is how she is affectionately known within the church. To say that Hyung Jin had been on a political journey would be rather an extreme understatement. 
in 2008, he echoed his father's sentiments from 1974 by celebrating the election of a black president in the form of Barack Obama, stating that, quote, I am very proud as an American to have a black president. I was born and raised in America. I am part of a minority. To see a minority representative being the president of the United States of America is extremely inspiring. It's just miraculous, end quote. After founding the so-called Rod of Iron Ministries, though, Hyung Jin began to adopt much more radical right-wing views. In 2018, he began wearing a crown made out of bullets to illustrate both his status within this new sect and his pro-gun rights ideology. Having espoused strong support for President Donald Trump from around 2017 onwards, Hyung Jin and his sect weren't best pleased when Trump lost the election in 2020, becoming proponents of the theory that the election had somehow been rigged or stolen from the president. Hyung Jin and his band of devoted Moonies reportedly helped to orchestrate the January 6 attack on the United States Capitol building, with Moon partaking in the attempted insurrection. Moon avoided criminal charges on that occasion and, presumably, he must have been a bit irritated when Trump took the opportunity, like so many Republican presidents and ex-presidents before him, to give a speech to the original Unification Church, led by his mother, with whom the Republican Party is so intimately tied, at an event to mark the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. I must confess my abject ignorance to knowing virtually nothing about any of this before I began to research this video, but now I feel like I could go on mastermind with Sun Myung Moon and the Unification Church as my specialist subject. Personally, I'm just glad that I don't live somewhere with a bizarre cult of personality surrounding a group of entitled con artists and outright rogues who expect total deference and financial remuneration from their loyal subjects. Yeah, thank God for that. That is it for today's video, which was, I would argue, peak HITC7s. I know that a lot of it was not explicitly about football, but it had to be in there to explain the story, and there is a great deal that I left out, non-football-wise that is, including the link of the Unification Church to the recent assassination of former Japanese President Shinzo A, but you can look all of that up, or, you know, maybe I'll just start a channel devoted to cults at some point. Probably not. Don't want to get your hopes up. Anyway, thank you all very much as ever for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and make sure that you're subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7. You can also find me on Twitter or on Instagram via the username at HITC7 on both, should you wish to do so.